Okay, you are very likely to get a question like this on the test where there's obviously some algebra involved, there's more than the normal two variables, and we're being just basically asked to rearrange this thing so that we have 4j plus 9 kind of off on its own. So these are all skills you need, and I do think that the algebraic solution here is the easiest. Let me just show you what that will look like. So I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. So p is equal to k over 4j plus 9. So uh, we can we can kind of see that we've gotten the 4j plus 9 out of the fraction so we should do that to start. We should move it out of the fraction and the way to get rid of a fraction is through multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4j plus 9. The difference is when we do it on the right we, we have to treat it like a unit, right? So it's it's a it's a thing in basically parentheses and we don't want to distribute it. A lot of you are just going to kind of intuitively distribute because that's what you're used to in school because they ask normal questions in school. This is an SAT question. They're asking for something a little different knowing that many people are too robotic to adjust to the difference. So what I would do next is just rewrite this with the 4j plus 9 still as a unit and then put that p there. And now we can hopefully see like, okay, well, I don't need to mix the p in with the 4j plus 9. I just need to get the p out of there. And the way to do that is to divide by p. That will cross it out. And now we can see the k over p is choice A. And that is the answer. I, I definitely think that's the easiest way to go. You just need to have a confidence in algebra. If you don't, we do have some other options available to us. Um, I'm going to show you a, a quick arithmetize that might help here. Um, basically, since they don't tell us to find values of p or k or j, we can make up what we want. And I would just make up numbers that, that make this work out nicely. So I would say that j is 0, so I can kind of simplify the bottom. And I would also say that k is 18. Now that may seem random, but it's not. It's because if I do put 0 in for j, I'm going to have 18 over 4 times 0 is 0 plus 9. So I picked 18 because it's divisible by 9 in a way that's very convenient and in a way that doesn't get me the number 1, which I can tell based on my answer choices is going to be a little bit of a problem. That's more of an advanced thought, but um, you know, with practice with arithmetic, you can get better at, at knowing what numbers to pick. So 18, times, uh, 18 divided by 9 is 2, so now I've solved for a value of p. I made up random numbers for j and k, and I use those random numbers to get a semi-random value of p. It's random because it could have been something else if I had picked different numbers for j and k, but it's still dependent on the numbers that I ended up picking. So it's not like I completely made it up. It comes from this equation. And because of this, I basically got a, a complicated point, right? It's not an xy point because it has three letters, but it's behaving the same way. We, we can take these same numbers, plug them into all these answer choices, and see if they make sense. If they don't, then it's not an equivalent expression. So we know A is right, but let me just show you. If we did 4 times J is 0 plus 9 equals K over P, so that's 18 is K and P is 2. Well, that makes sense, because 4 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 9 is 9, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. So this is a valid statement. So I would know, okay, at least with this, this num these numbers, this equation works. I would need to try everything else to be sure. But as I go through, we'll see uh, all the j's are going to cancel because those are all going to be multiplied by 0. So really we're seeing, okay, does k times p equal 9? 9 is equal to k is 18, p is 2. No. 18 times 2 is 36, not 9. Uh, 9 is equal to k is 18, p is 2, so that would be 16. So no, 9 is not equal to 16. And then 9 is equal to 2 over 18. Well, 2 over 18 is 1 ninth, so it seems kind of close, but it's definitely different, and that would prove also that a is right. I do think that that is a more time-consuming strategy, but I think it's good to practice it when you can and to understand where it might work, because there probably will be times where arithmetize is the more efficient strategy, and so if you're practicing with it in these places where it's kind of maybe not the best, you at least are building that muscle and understanding how the strategy works so that when you really need it, it's ready to go. So I will continue to incorporate it into my videos so that you can see the test the way that I see it, so that when it really matters, you're prepared for the hard stuff.